Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Let's Play, and I'm going to play Banjo-Kazooie. Um, basically, I kind of wanted to play this after finding out that, and not to date this or anything, but finding that, um, Banjo-Kazooie was coming to Smash Brothers. So, this is sort of a, uh, you know, wasn't going to play this you know originally or at least anytime soon and decided hey why not now so because i kind of got into the mood um and it kind of helps out with uh the kind of rounds out the star trek playthrough so let's go ahead and play and i've already got file one was from way back when that's got 100 percent. so i'm going to do player two so let's go ahead and get started Um, and you'll kind of notice from the beginning that I uh, am playing the Xbox Live version, or the Live Arcade version, um, and not the original N64 version. Um, it's just because it's easier to record, uh, and there's a quality of life change for this version um, that is definitely an improvement over the original one. Um, and then is notes don't reset in case you die which isn't too big of a deal for the most part until you get to the last couple worlds rusty bucket bay and click lock wood um especially rusty bucket bay so um plus it looks a lot better anyway so everything was cleaned up and resolution looks a lot better so And I want to say this game was released sometime, I want to say like 2008, 2009? Um, because it was released around, it was either released around or a little bit after Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Um, which was like 2008, so... Oh, 
Waddles is kind of an idiot. It's like he can't see anything. Yeah, it's a pretty simplistic plot. Um, just Gruntilda the witch kidnaps Tootie because she looks, you know, she's prettier than Granny. Um, so now she's going to kidnap her and steal her beauty. So, as the trusting older brother, Banjo needs to go rescue her along with Banjo's trusty partner, Kazooie. Buddy Kazooie. You can hold down the A button to speed up the text because I'm tired of hearing this sort of stuff. I'm going to do the training just because I kind of, I don't mind doing it. So, and at least you get to, um, doing it this way, you get to explore all of Spiral Mountain, which is the tutorial hub area. So, so right now we can hit the A button to jump, which we have a really gimp jump right now um, and that's basically it uh, the right stick rotates the camera which is good and of course the left stick moves forward so as we progress through this area we're gonna learn more yeah, it's extra. anyone home well seeing as how he was just in the other freaking molehill <laughs> And talking about camera controls, which this doesn't really help out too much, but whatever. Yeah, you know, seeing as how he like jumps like barely a foot off the ground right now. It's like here, maybe your jump needs some help. Press A to jump and hold it to jump higher, so pretty simple. Yeah, so with our new jumping abilities, now we can jump from log to log. Yay, how about that? But that one's a little too tall, so we'll go ahead and do the backflip and get up to it. Um, Mr. Honeycomb, of course everything has to have eyes, even inanimate objects, as you'll notice. Um, so this game was released in 1998, I want to say, so it was like 10 years is when the this version came out after the original one, so, um, and of course, 
It's basically a sort of taking the original um, Super Mario 64 concept of collectathon and rolling and changing things up a bit. Um, instead of mission based per se, where you would select stages, you know, you had your world and then you would select the star for Super Mario 64 to, you know, to which star you wanted to collect. And obviously you could collect other ones, but certain aspects of the level would change. Um, Banjo Kazooie, it's like, okay, they just let you into the world and you can just go collect all of the uh, collectibles um, whenever you feel like, so. go and another honeycomb piece and behind the waterfall is an extra life because behind the waterfall is always an extra life yep. underwater press X to do the more powerful swim. The A button basically lets you kind of steer. Um, so you'll be using that a lot. Oh yeah, I can't climb yet. <laughs> it's like you're kind of relegated to adhering to the rules of the um, tutorials. But yeah, this game came out in 1998, pretty sure. Um, the sequel came out in 2000, and then Nuts and Bolts came out in 2008, so... Good times. And of course, now that we can climb, we can get this honeycomb piece as well. down there, there's a little alcove, and if I go down there, there we go, all right, two more tutorials left. Gotta fit the personality of Kazooie's. Yeah. Kazooie's mean to everybody. Banjo's just kind of goes with the flow. Um, and all that sort of jazz. So. And no matter which is the last one that you destroy with the beak barge, that's the one that will give you the honeycomb piece. So. so now we can. We've done the beak barge. But of course, we still don't have normal combat, and that's what we're going to learn in this one. Oh, I simply must know which is why by the time the second game occurs, the claw swipe is not even existent. So, because it's so freaking useless. Like, it has no range whatsoever. It, it's kind of like one of those moves that you do accidentally, and it's like, okay. That's, there you go. Woo! So that'll be pretty much your primary damaging move when you're on the run, is to use the roll, which changes in the uh, second game. They actually add Kazooie to the mix, so Kazooie comes out and basically becomes more of a barrier around Banjo while he does it. Which to me almost feels like that it gives him an extra... Um, I almost want to feel like there's mobility, but... Just talking about random differences between the first and the second game, like it really matters, so 
we're all going to talk about playing the first game. So, yep, rat attack rap. That's a good move, too. Um, especially for dealing with enemies that come out of the holes in the wall. Kind of gives you a little bit of invincibility to it. So. Tell us what to do next. Hey, we got our first hanging phone. There are six honeycombs, so now we get an extra piece of life up there, so... Alright, and with that, basically the tutorial is done. It's a shame, because this is probably one of the best pieces of music in the entire game, a Spiral Mountain. Which I have... I was thinking about this earlier. There's no exit to this place. <laughs> like, everybody just... You kind of just live at the bottom of the hill, and Granny lives at the top of the mountain on a bridge. And it's like, okay, but where does Banjo go? Um, which they kind of talk about later on. I mean, in the second game, but still, that requires an X... And, like, a piece of equipment that gets them out of the area. So, I'm not really sure how this works normally. I guess they're just kind of stuck living here or whatnot, so... Of course, we know it's Gruntilla's lair because it's her frickin' face and we're entering her mouth, which... Deceivingly? Oh, I can't even... I was gonna try to move the camera. Oh, I still can't do it. So... Really, we're trying to get to the top of the tower, which is the top of her hat. Um, but when you get in here, obviously things are bigger on the inside um, than they appear. So, Alright, so this is going to cover it for the first episode. I just wanted to get through Spiral Mountain for this one. Um, next time, uh, we're going to go after the first world. And I'm basically going to try to just do one world per video. There are nine worlds um, in the game. so, And then we'll kind of just go from there. Um, of course, everything is subject to change in case I have any difficulties with stuff, so... Um, but otherwise, yeah, we'll keep right on trucking, and we'll go ahead and start with the first world of Gruntilda's Lair next time. So, thanks, have a good afternoon, good evening, and good night.